What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Will Cotry, once again with another episode of The Sports Binge, the program where you get relaxed and be informed. So glad you can join me with another ep- another day of your time. You know, just uh, it's been a very interesting day so far. Just been cleaning up around the house, you know, doing my adult responsibilities. You know, I was actually about to go to run to the library, you know, just to update the, the car because, you know, from my favorite show back in the day, Arthur, with the Arvark, you know, from Elwood City, he said, uh, having fun isn't hard when you got a library card. <laughs> you know, I'm old school, so even though I go to the library a lot, honestly, but, you know, you, it's, it does serve its purpose. But anyway, as I was getting ready, I got a notice on my phone, and uh, it was really interesting. And it said, um, it's from ESPN, and it said, I'm just looking at it right now, uh, building around LeBron was, quote, not fun. Former Cavs GM and current Pelicans exec David Griffin tells Sports Illustrated the challenges of building around James was too stressful. And I find this very interesting because I said back in April when he actually first got the job with the Pelicans was that uh, he the, the title of my video back in April was that he wanted to prove that, uh, you know, he, he wants to set out to prove uh, his front office worth because I feel like throughout LeBron James's career, uh, despite his greatness being the greatest small forward in the history of the sport, uh, there's been this notion that um, he can do no wrong for a lot of for a lot of fans out there with the analytics the bronze stands would have whatever the case may be. But when you consider that um, when the stuff go when stuff goes wrong, it seems like he always, you know, he was always absolved from any accountability and culpability. But when stuff goes right, he gets all of the credit. And even despite the franchise, the Cleveland Cavaliers winning the championship back in 2016, um, it was, you know, it still didn't change the fact that it was a, a high stress situation for uh, David Griffin. He said, quote, everything we did was so inorganic and unsuitable, unsustainable and frankly not fun. I was miserable. Literally, the moment we won the championship, I knew I was going to leave. There was no way I was going to stay for any amount of money. Um, it just really spells out all what he had inherited first he did it he put the due time in throughout the league you know just uh starting from the ground up just to really establish a name for himself uh league wide before getting the exact job and dealing and i've said this ad nauseum about they um uh don just like just their owner dan gilbert uh he's i feel like he's one of three to five worst owners in the history of the sport of sports uh because of when you challenge lebron james's manhood you know, say he's a coward. You know, it's just it just really didn't sit well with me and the, the fans burning the jerseys. Really, just enabling the fans with those comments. Uh, it's, it was really classless. And for him to lose LeBron twice, that's a huge indictment for anybody. To just lose a, a player, an athlete of that caliber and that magnitude, you just have to be more responsible to that. And it's just it's just no excuse, regardless. Now going back to David Griffin. Just to put the pieces around LeBron, just to put an adequate, more than adequate team around him with the star power, they really did the job. Uh, but I feel like it just still wasn't enough. It just, at least in the public, the court of public opinion, it just wasn't enough for him to get his due due. Now Griffin went on to say that uh, quote: "The reason is LeBron is getting all the credit and none of the blame, and that's not fun for people." And he and that's really just the challenges that a lot of people have with playing with LeBron James, even though you're gonna be in the midst of a, an iconic basketball player. Uh, they just didn't like being a part of that world, as he quoted through the ESPN article. And, um, and like I said, it, once, I, once again, I said back in April that um, it said the same thing. You know, he just was not going to get it. When you play with LeBron, there's just a certain uh, a lifestyle that has, when I say a lifestyle, it's just a certain mindset that has to be taking place that you're not going to get your due, due, uh, due diligence about or you do credit about what you're doing, you know, because if you if you fall falter too much, you know, it's it's going to go haywire for you. But it, my thing is, if if they, Dwayne Wade, you know, they criticize him being getting older, which he was, and this wasn't the same player. They criticize somebody that's well, well respected like that of that level, you know, it's going to happen to everybody. That's just a reality. But as far as my video back from April, uh, I'm gonna post a link link to it in, in the description box below so just you guys can see it on your own time uh, i want to hold you guys up because it's, it is a fit 14 15 minute video so i know your time is precious so i want to do that to you guys but uh nonetheless um i just found this whole story even though it just broke like an hour and a half ago it just 
I think it's just so fascinating how stuff comes full circle in life. Because um, the, the funny thing about how people work is that they'll never, t- a lot of times they won't tell you how they truly feel up front. They'll wait years down the line, months down the line, weeks down the line, days down the line, whatever the, whatever the case may be. Going back to high school, um, you know, just they had people had their opinions about me, how I was too faith driven or, you know, I was like a, basically a Bible thumper and stuff of that regard. And uh, just that now some, those were the people that actually told me up front, whether it was on Facebook, in person. But there's some people that didn't. Uh, and then like, I didn't find out till so, like, late in senior year. They were saying like, like they tell me personally, they sent me notes, like anonymous notes. We was at our senior, I was, I'll, I'll paint the picture for you. So I went to a, a, a private Catholic high school. First time ever going to a private school. So, you know, I, I don't know if, you know, there's a lot of students out there who went to a religious, back, a school with a religious background. They had retreats for each grade, freshman retreat, sophomore retreat, junior retreat, senior retreat. Senior retreat was just most involved because we went out of town for a couple of days, you know, stayed in different camps, different groups. And uh, one of the activities was we had um, we were in a small group and we had different uh, those brown paper bags, about a number of them. And uh, we we just our assignment was to really drop uh, some nuggets of each person in that group, whether it was like the teacher, the group leader over us or the students in our each other's grade. Uh, and it was a just like a drop a nugget of encouragement, just uh, like stuff that they really like about them. So like my bag was full, like was like about seven notes saying like I appreciate you as a person and uh, I appreciate your toughness in Christ or your boldness to speak what you feel. So like and it it, it just this whole David Griffin situation, they people won't ever tell you. A lot of times they won't tell you up front, but they'll tell you down the line. Because whether it's they want they don't want to create friction, they don't want to expose themselves and be vulnerable right in the in the heat of the moment. But it just like I said, it, it always comes around, and, and a lot of times it always comes around in due season. So I just wanted to stop in real quick. I'm not going to hold you guys up I'm about seven minutes in, so yeah, too long enough. <laughs> but yeah, I just want to thank you guys so much. I still got more videos coming. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It's going to be a successful year. Um, you know, I just. I posted eight videos on my channel throughout the month of July, so really just I'm re- really just trying to build the brand, be more consistent, be more present for my YouTube family, and I, I'm really excited where this channel is going, so you guys have a blessed day and be well.